everybody. Today's recipe, we are making a rhubarb crisp. It's a very popular recipe right now. Uh, the rhubarb's in season, and so that's what we're doing. And uh, we're making it with, you know, obviously rhubarb, and it has that beautiful, nice, sweet, and tangy uh, flavor to it. And then we're gonna top it with a very easy crumble, which is made with oat flour and almond flour. And we're gonna toss in a few walnuts and some cinnamon and butter, and it's super delicious. You're gonna love it. So I'm Rockin' Robin, and I'm gonna show you how to make it right after this. So to start off our recipe, we're gonna mix our dry ingredients here in the bowl. This is uh, some monk fruit that I got from Costco. It's a good sweetener. And we're gonna add some arrowroot as a thickener to this because uh, we, wanna, we don't want it to be too watery. You can use cornstarch if you like. Now that's some cinnamon, and then we're just gonna mix this up until everything's nicely combined. So here's our star of the show, some rhubarb. I've got a couple of large stalks here. And you can pick this up at any grocery store as it's in season. Give it a good rinse and then we'll slice it up by cutting off the ends there. And then we'll just slice it into about half inch to an inch thick. Now if you decide to grow your own rhubarb, just keep in mind that the leaves are poisonous. I do want to mention that so you don't want to, you know, consume that. So keep chopping until you get about five cups of chopped rhubarb. All right, we're gonna take our rhubarb that we just cut up and measured out, and we're gonna just pour it right into our baking dish. This is an eight by eight inch baking dish. And you're just gonna pour the, the rhubarb right in there. And then we're gonna take our sugar mixture and just pour it right on top. I'm gonna zest an organic lemon over the top and then we'll give that a stir. So we'll set this aside for a minute. And then in this bowl, we're gonna combine all of our topping ingredients. So that's our oat flour. You can make your own by blending up, you know, regular old fashioned oats, or you can buy it already made. That's my almond flour. Now for sweetener, I'm using coconut sugar. You can use brown sugar if you want. More cinnamon, of course, I love cinnamon. And a pinch of salt. Take your whisk and combine that really well. All right, our next ingredient is some butter. Now I have some butter here in this container and it's soft, but it's not soft enough. I'm gonna make it into a liquid, but it's not gonna be super soft. I'll show you. So here's our butter. I put it in the microwave for like, first it was 20 seconds on power level three, and uh, then I did it again. So it's, it's almost melted, but it's not super hot. It's still a little bit thick. So just stir it up a little bit. And then we're gonna pour this into our mixture here. And then take your spoon and start stirring it up. And then hopefully you might, you might use your hands if you want to, but you just wanna blend this all together so that it's kinda of like wet sand. And I also have some walnuts here for a little crunch. And I'm gonna to toss those in as well. You can add these, you can leave them out. I, I think it's really nice with them in there. And you can add as much as you want. Oops. So the idea is just to get everything, you know, moistened by the butter. And that butter just gives it an amazing flavor, of course. Who doesn't love that buttery flavor? So now we'll take the crumble and we'll just use our hands, clean hands, of course, everybody, make sure. Uh, and we'll just kind of sprinkle this all over. Now this is ready to go in the oven, 350 degrees, and we'll put it in there. We'll check it at 25 minutes, but it'll probably take somewhere between 25 and 30 minutes. While our rhubarb is cooking in the oven, it's time for our chef joke. What music do chefs play in the kitchen? Walk and roll. Our rhubarb crisp cooked in the oven for 35 minutes at 350. Then I cranked it up to 400 and cooked it an additional about seven minutes. And this is what we've got. It looks fantastic and smells really good. I wish you guys could smell it. All right, I let it cool just a few minutes here. So I'm gonna serve it up or just take a little piece out. And it's very soft and it's very warm right now, but that's the best time to have 
this kind of thing. Well, I tell you, that is flavorful. You've got the rhubarb with the tartness and the sweetness going on. The cinnamon comes through, I love it, it's good. The, the crisp is really wonderful. The oat flour really makes a difference. If you were to just use almond flour, it would not be as good in my opinion. The oat flour has a lot of good flavor. And then you got a little bit of walnut crunch in there. The butter is in there too. I mean, it's so buttery and delicious. You're gonna love it. So if you just happen to be looking for a rhubarb pie recipe, maybe you wanna make a pie instead of a crisp, well, I've got you covered. I've got a recipe uh, by my friend, uh, Jane Massengill. She, she came over a few years ago and we made this pie together. And I'll tell you, it's the easiest pie I think I've ever made. The crust is super simple. You don't have to be real careful with it. And it comes together quick and it's very delicious. This is her family's recipe. And I was just really pleased that, you know, and happy that she was willing to share it with me. So click that link right down there and you can check that pie out. It's uh, gotten some really good reviews. So you might want to, you know, watch that and maybe give it a try. Thanks so much for watching everybody. Uh, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and we'll see you next time. See you next week. Take care.